In Houdini 17, we have a brand new node called the falloff node. And what this node does is it takes a selection of points and it figures out how far those points are from other points. That value then gets stored into an attribute and we can use that attribute to control a variety of effects. So here I have four circles and I've animated the scale over time so that we have this sort of effect going on. These circles then get meshed with this poly wire and ultimately sent into a group node where I've set the bounding type to bounding objects and I'm also running over the points of our grid. Essentially, wherever these poly wires are intersecting the points of our grid, this will be the selected points that get then fed into the falloff node. Once the falloff node has this group here, this torus enable, we're then able to control how far away these points are allowed to look for other points. So if I go here, we could see a visualization of what that looks like. And the areas in red right now indicate a value of one. If I go to our geometry spreadsheet, you'll notice that we have our fall off and these are the points that currently have a value of one. For the yellow and orange areas, those are going to represent values that are between zero and one. So 0 0.25, 0 0.9, 0 0.8. And the reason for that is we have our type here set to normalize distance. Normalized meaning a value between zero and one. So this is what we get right there. And we can also change the ramp and how this is interpolated. If we change our type here to, let's say, distance, we'll end up with a very different effect. If I go to our geometry spreadsheet here, you'll notice that now our falloff has a capped out value at 0.25, and this correlates with our radius. If I was to visualize what's happening, here's essentially what this is doing. The algorithm is going to look out from our points, right? It's going to go out here. And let's say it finds a point here that is 0.25 meters away. Well, obviously this is going to be a value of 0.25. If it looks for a point and it's further than 0.25, let's say the actual distance of this is 0.5. Because our type here is set to distance, it's actually going to cap this out at our 0.25 value, even though it's farther away than 0.25. That's what's happening with this distance. And just to show you what happens if we crank this up, let's say I go to a radius of 10. Now our values are allowed to go past the 0.25 and we actually see the actual distance because it's no longer capped. If I wanted to not have any kind of cap in the way that it calculates the distance, I can go here to our distance uh, type and change this to unbounded distance. And now, no matter what, I will get the distance from every single point to the closest point of our selected point group. For now, I'm going to set this to our normalized distance. And I'm also going to say that the radius is 0.25. Eventually, this gets fed into a smooth node where our attribute gets smoothed a little bit. And I'm going to rename that attribute to height, where then, once we plug this into our mountain node, we have our shockwave effect. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to follow my channel as well as check out my other courses that you can find within the video's description. Thanks for watching.